Hey everyone, this is Nico Renshaw from the Ascension Foundation and in this video we're going to look into the basics about how to build a simple scene with the web editor. So he here I am in the builder and this is my collection of scenes I've already built. Let's go into this one which I already started. Let's go into edit it. Now we'll take a few seconds to load all of the assets in the scene but in the meantime let's look at how the camera moves. So in order to rotate the camera I gotta click the mouse and drag. And with just that, I can pan around. And also, I can move the camera by clicking A, W, S, and D, just as I do inside the center end. So by combining these two things, I can move around and pan around in any way to access any point of view I want. I will see that there's just a handful of very simple assets right here. Um, but I can add as many assets as I want. If I look here down in the bottom section of the screen, you will see that there is a whole lot of asset packs. Each one has a lot of different assets and I can drag in anything I want. For example, I can drag in this table into my scene. Let's try to put it inside. So it, as you can see, it takes a second to load and here it is. And as you can see, it started out halfway into the wall, which I would have not wanted, but I can easily correct this. Now, if I select the item, you will see that this gizmo appears with some arrows I can use this to move the item around. So I can just move it in one axis at a time through this. And also you'll notice that there is a collection of gizmos up here whenever I have an, an entity selected. I by default use the translation tool to move it, but I can also use the other tools. I can use the rotation tool and the um, scaling tool. Let's, look, let's first look at some details about moving. So of course I can move one axis at a time, um, I can move things up and down as well, but notice that if I move things way too far in any direction, um, they will be um, making my item appear as out of bounds from my scene. Now my scene has a uh, delimitation as it's meant to be displayed in world next to other scenes, so the idea is that I shouldn't exceed any of these boundaries, otherwise I'd be stepping in someone else's um, territory. Um, so whenever something is out of bounds, notice that it gets marked in red. This is a good warning for you to make sure that none of your items are where they shouldn't be. Now in this case, my scene has, um, if I can check here and see that it has four by two parcels. So each one of these parcels is 16 meters by 16 meters. So in this case, we have four parcels in the rows and two in the columns. And that is the shape that we see here from above. So if I wanted to make my scene larger, I can just modify these numbers and expand or make my scene smaller as well, just as easy. Now let's look at other ways I can modify my item. I can also use the rotation gizmo and you'll see that there are three axes I can manage. So if I click on this one and drag, I'm rotating it on you know a parallel in a way that is parallel to the ground or you can also rotate it in other directions which in this case are a bit less practical but um, in other items it may be a lot more useful by the way i can easily click ctrl z to undo any actions um, yeah just in case i don't want to adjust the rotation exactly millimetrically to get it just right um, another interesting thing is you'll notice that on the right there's a panel that basically shows me information about each item I select. And among other things, you can see the position, uh, position rotation, and scale. Um, and I can also adjust these things manually. Um, for example, I can set this number to 25 in case I want it to uh, align just right. Or I can set it to be zero so that it's flush aligned on the ground. Um, and the same applies to other things. In some cases, it's more comfortable to work directly with the numbers because you know you have absolute precision in everything you're doing. The final of these three gizmos is the scaling tool. And with the scaling tool, um, I can, again, um, scale things in one axis at a time. I can make this table longer or wider, or I can use, or I can undo both things, or I can use this other white dot to uh, scale it up proportionally, keeping all of the yeah, all of the proportions um, still equal 
Another thing I can do is multi-select items. So if I press Ctrl and keep it pressed, I can select as many items as I want. Notice the white outline. Now I can move them as a group. I can also rotate them as a group or do whatever I want. In this case, let's undo those two actions. Let's say that with this new table, I feel that the room is too small now and I want to expand it. Um, but now, um, let's say I want to add one more chunk of wall, but getting this gap just right can be a bit of a challenge. So another thing I can do, let's undo this movement, is to use a snap to grid mode. So I can enable this checkbox here and let's set the snap to grid to one meter instead of a quarter of a meter. And now when I move my walls, notice that it moves in fixed increments of one meter. And this will make it easier to get the size of the, the wall just right. So let's say it's about this. Um, and let's go ahead and duplicate this chunk of wall. I can just do this by pressing Ctrl C and Ctrl V. So here I have it, my new chunk of wall, and let's add another on the other side. And that's about right. The final thing I want to show is how to nest items. You can set an item to be a child of another item so that whenever the parent moves, the children move with it as well. Let's look for a mug to put on our table. So if I search here in the search bar, you see that I can you know, check the entire collection of items. And this is pretty handy to find some things without having to look through the whole catalog. So let's elevate the mug so that it's high up on my table. And let's make a copy of it with Ctrl C and Ctrl V just to have a bit more of a social life and not be a solitary drinker. So now it looks like the mug is on the table, but really if I move the table, you'll notice that the mugs stay put. Um, ideally, I would like to me, you know, move the table and have everything else move with it. And that becomes more of a deal if you know I have an elaborate, complicated setup on the table. Um, so what I can do is set the mugs as children of the table. If you look in the left, you'll see that there's um, a reference to each single item that is on the scene. Um, and here is my table and here are my mugs. So what I can do is I can just drag the mugs over to the table and nothing appears to have changed. But now if I move the table, the mugs move with it. So all of the things that are nested to one another move together. If I rotate the table as well, as well I can move it like this. But the mugs are also free to move independently of the table since they're children. It's not like they're like joined together, there is a hierarchy here. And you could, in theory, also keep going in the hierarchy as far as you want. Um, here's another tip. You can double click on an item here on the list and focus the camera on it. So here's another item that has a bunch of nested items. All of these books are independent items. This candle could be a bit lower as well. Um, but the bookshelf moves as a whole as well. And this makes my life so much easier if I now decide to move the bookshelf to another part of the room. I don't have to move each one of these items in the pen. So whenever I am happy with the results of my, of my scene, I can hit the preview scene button and see how my scene looks in the first person as player visiting this as it will be when I publish it to the central. So here's the scene we built together. I hope you enjoyed this and found it useful and can't wait to see what you put together. Happy building.